we wanted to talk about building inclusive products and how to make that easy and actionable for engineering teams. And as Jerry and I were sort of preparing for this conversation, it became really clear to us that there's not a whole lot of insight behind the scenes as to what this looks like within engineering teams. Can you share with us about the process of building inclusive products and, and what that's looked like at Pinterest? And, and then maybe we can start to deconstruct some of the mechanics or frameworks within that conversation. So what is what does that process look like of building inclusive products at Pinterest? Yeah, well, I, I think the first point, you're, it's going to be maybe a bit disappointing. It is it is not easy. So there there is no easy insight on it. And I think when we think about Pinterest, the, the nice part, I, I've been here two and a half years, but you know, Ben and Evan had this mission to build a platform that was beautiful and that people loved, you know, like really, I mean, both Ben and, uh, and uh, Evan are designers and, and uh, you know, architects and you should see their, their collections are just, just unbelievable. And so they, they really did want a product that people like thought was beautiful. And as we, as people come to Pinterest for inspiration, you know, just like any startup, when you, you've got early adopters, oftentimes the early adopters are, you know, typical one demographic. Often it's a bunch of geeks, you know, in our case, it happened to be, you know, middle America crafts and that sort of thing. And, and what we found, like, as we um, began to get feedback from our, our, um, from our users, we'd get some quotes like, Hey, I don't want to have to put, you know, black in front of my in front of my query or asian in front of my query you know when i'm doing things and it we knew with both um uh our ind teams and our engineering teams that we really had to get to work right and so the the way you have to fix this is actually to step way back right because once once data has built has been built into your um models then trying to unwind that sort of learning is really tough, right? You have to like over inject and you trying to, you know, to, uh, you know, boost up features and that sort of thing will limit, will work for a little while, but really what you have to do is go back and retrain your data. And so we had to go let's step way back and, and make sure that the data that we fed them, the, the engine um, was diverse from the outset. And, and so we had to, uh, on, on features like, we built a product called uh, skin tone uh, ranges. And so if you do a search, if you do a search for like lipstick and it'll ask you right on there, what skin tone would you like to see, you know? And, and it'll let you pick that. And you can imagine uh, the technology behind that is extremely complex, not only from, from a, just an engineering standpoint, but um, the computer vision side of that is incredibly hard from a, just detecting skin tones, um, we've had to go through a, a series. It's been like four iterations of how to get that right. And it, so back to your question, it's like, is, it, is there easy points? What I typically tell CTOs and heads of data is that your data probably is biased already. So you need to go back and check your data sets and, and go reset um, the data from the very beginning. And that's, that's really quote unquote, the easy part, but it's actually harder than, than uh, it sounds, right? Yeah. What, so I think the, the, my immediate follow up was like, well, how do you, how do you check the data sets? Like, is there, like, how does that conversation typically look or who are you engaging with to, to do that sort of assessment piece? Yeah, great question. So we, of course, used our IND teams, um, but we also hired uh, some wonderful people. We have uh, the woman that runs um, our inclusive engineering team is uh, Nadia Falaz. And then we have a head of product named Annie Ta. And then the original um, uh, person from IND was a woman named Candace Morgan, who's now uh, part of Google. And the three of them together sort of built the whole ecosystem, like, here's what we have to go do. And so then you have to build, go, you have to go out and literally build a diverse data set. And in the cases where we didn't have it, we had to go get it. And, and it wasn't so much that we didn't have it, it was just way biased on one side than the other. So you have to, you know, have to sort of downplay the others. And then you just continue to add features on top of it. You know, we, we knew that um, skin tone ranges was the number one feature that people wanted. And then we just launched um, hair pattern, which you can imagine is extremely complex. You know, curly hair, straight hair, bald, all the, all the above, trying to identify that in billions of pictures and to make sure you're sourcing that um, is, is a really fun technical challenge. So Nadia and, uh, and Annie have the, the ball on this. Um, the other thing we do is, um, is 
a new user that comes in through the front door, you know, what do you show them? And it's like, how do I show diverse, uh, diverse feeds from the very beginning when somebody comes in and does a search and say, hey, I'm interested in, in beauty products or I'm interested in fashion. What do you actually show there? And, you know, a lot of our growth is coming outside the U.S. as well. So we not only have to build diverse content from a from a skin tone and, and a nationality range, but we also have to think about it globally as well.